SpaceX Starship's progress is astonishing while for Flight 1. The goal was not to blow the, the pad up and ideally get some distance. And with Flight 2. It was to get past a staging, so we achieved the goal of getting past staging and almost to orbit. Then in Flight 3, Elon Musk decided to take a big step forward. And then Flight, flight 3, we've got, well, we want to get to orbit. So to achieve that goal, how has SpaceX improved its Starship rocket? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. We know that any upgrade on Starship is the result of some previous useful incidents. Without testing and failure, SpaceX cannot know which Starship's component needs to be changed and how. And recent Starship updates in preparation for Flight 3 are no exception. In the much-awaited presentation on January 11, Elon Musk finally revealed the secret behind the explosion of Ship 25 in Flight 2. According to Elon, the reason causing the loss of Starship's upper stage is linked to venting liquid oxygen propellant near the end of the burn. That venting, he said, was needed only because the vehicle was not carrying any payload. Therefore, if it had, had a payload, it would have made it to orbit, because the reason that it actually didn't quite make it to orbit was we vented the liquid oxygen, and the liquid oxygen ultimately led to fire and an, ex and an explosion. And he hopes... And then flight, flight three, we've got, well, we want to get to orbit and we want to do an in-space engine burn from the header tank and prove the, that we can rel reliably deorbit. By the way, in the February flight, SpaceX will also test the PEZ dispenser payload door that will be used on later flights to deploy the full-size Starlink V2 satellites, significantly larger than the V2 mini satellites currently being launched on Falcon 9. Of course, this isn't the first time we've seen this payload system on the Starship prototype, but it would be the first time it's been intentionally tested in an actual test flight. As a result, the upgrade of the PEZ dispenser is compulsory. On December 20, 2023, in addition to Ship 28's static fire test, SpaceX tested this system and no error was recorded. With testing the PEZ dispenser, SpaceX's fans raised many questions about its role in Flight 3. It became clear when the event SpaceX company talk on the 12th of this month took place. Ship 28 will likely fly with its payload, perhaps Starlink, to avoid an explosion similar to its predecessor, and then enter orbit as expected. To be honest, there are just a few light modifications on the payload door, including removing the door to modify the seal and material changing on the edge. The edges previously were believed to be made of a cork-like material on the edges to press against the ship, somewhat sealing the gap. Now, it has been replaced with plain steel on the updated door. I think the seal only serves a protective role at the edges or to signal something, nothing more. For the plain steel, maybe it will help to avoid scratches due to friction between the payload door and satellites during deployment. The company may also intend to test the durability of this material in upcoming practical tests. In order to carry Starlink, Starship needs the PEZ dispenser rack. This is the component that fewer people know which acts as the housing and deployment mechanism for the Starlink satellites. If SpaceX wants to deploy Starlink in large amounts on Starship, they will stretch the dispenser rack's height by a considerable amount. However, because the plan for Ship 25 was originally to carry fewer satellites, thus, a much shorter version was utilized. Next, before going any further, if you found this information useful, remember to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now, let's go back to today's episode. Not only the PEZ dispenser payload door, but also the ship's Raptor engine attracts attention. While Ship 25 still sports the older hydraulically actuated TVC, which involves using a hydraulic power unit, HPU, to drive this system, Ship 26 was the first ship to feature electric TVC and Ship 28 will be the first ship to bring it to flight. Being known as the gimballing system, HPU is used to power the hydraulic thrust vector control for the Raptor engines. This HPU sits tucked inside the engine section and is surrounded by the same heavy-duty shielding that protects the engines. This update allows SpaceX to remove the hydraulic pistons on the engines and the associated hydraulic systems on the vehicle side such as the hydraulic power unit. Once HPU gets ditched, the protective shielding for it is no longer present. Thanks to that, the mass and complexity are cut down significantly. Honestly, since 2022, 
Elon Musk has realized the advantages of the electric TVC and he confirmed that all Raptors moving forward would be featuring electric TVCs to replace the hydraulically actuated TVC. He said, all mass necessitated by an engine design should count as engine mass, egg shrouds, TVC hydraulic power, or excess purge gas. Raptors in production now have electric TVC saving over a ton of hydraulics mass on Booster. Booster 9 was the first super heavy to feature this, and as Elon said after Starship's first launch, the electric TVC could be a game changer to help the booster reach stage separation. The reason why Starship could not make it to stage separation in Flight 1 is due to the loss of thrust vector control on Booster 7. Ensuring the ability of the rocket to continue to steer itself even with multiple engine failures, is key for the success of the Super Heavy in its flight. Booster 9 is a lot easier because we use electric motors to steer the engines as opposed to hydraulic actuators, where you've got a common manifold between the hydraulic actuators, Musk said. The electric actuated engines will be much more isolated. It will be key to ensure that any single engine failures are isolated, and the company has made the rocket more robust for this purpose, he said. If you have extremely good engine isolation and an engine fails, it does not cause a failure of neighboring engine or the stage itself, Musk added. Because then if you lose one of 33 engines, that's a 3% thrust loss. It's not a big deal. If you do not have good engine isolation, then an engine failure can domino to other engines or to parts of the stage, then you have an extremely unreliable design. However, in fact, Booster 9 still exploded during the November 2023 event, while Booster 9 attempted to flip maneuver and kick off the boost back burn after the stage separation, one engine in the second ring failed to ignite, followed by a series of core engine failures and finally, they all shut down. The unsuccessful center core engine reignition could have contributed to the final rapid unscheduled disassembly. So far, SpaceX has not commented on why Booster 9 exploded so we don't know if there was a problem with the TVC. However, the fact that SpaceX remains faithful to this system shows its high level of reliability. In contrast to Ship 28, we do not see many new things for Booster 10. One of the rare updates on the Booster 10 is about the new dome design for the common bulkhead which uses new flatter domes made of tension formed panels to replace the old funnel-shaped dome. This could signal the light adjustment of the total propellant volumes in each tank. One more interesting tidbit, it's safe to say that compared to both Booster 7 and 9, Booster 10 is the first one that receives the least changes. Obviously, it's a good sign that Starship's team has made huge leaps in their attempts to make Super Heavy reliable. Booster 7 is just a demo version and Booster 9 is actually the first complete version that is built based on the B7's failure. What's amazing is that this first version of SpaceX performed pretty well in Flight 2. Thus, its successor just needs to take the legacy and add a little something new to be perfect. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high-quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.